smoking when we made this? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. There's a very old saying, if it's not broke, Disney's remake of Aladdin sucks. In the ongoing need to suck nostalgia's withering teat, Disney offers us its latest multi-million dollar budget table scraps. The funny thing about this one was people were kind of onto it at first, especially with the portrayal of the genie. At first, audiences were angry he appeared not to be blue. Clearly the biggest problem this movie could face. Then when they saw he was blue, but awkwardly computer generated, people freaked again. With Disney reassuring folks that he will look less awkward in the final film. And that, um... Hello? Um... Oh my god. I said you... Christ, he's making his Shark Tale animation look like Paddington! This is the less awkward genie? Well, let me tell you, as a crowd that's been duped a million times in the past, we're totally gonna be duped again! Yep, despite mixed critical reviews, crowds once again seem to love Disney shit being shoveled right back into their mouths. But to the film's credit, there is a lot more to it than just an awkwardly animated Fresh Prince of Booberry. You're forgetting the flat lead, lame villain, boring comedy, and complete lack of anything fresh or memorable that made the original a household classic. But it... Looks like thing I associate with good, so must have substance. It's the Instagram of movies! Okay, I'm gonna try and figure out why this film is beloved by so many while giving the point of view of a douchebag who likes it when Disney, you know, Disney's and not Disney's. Let's take a look at the crowd-pleasing box office remake where were you guys? We were doing so good! Aladdin. So we start off this Arabian night with a pirate ship. You know what, it's different. In a Disney remake, that's like seeing a leprechaun feed a unicorn fresh Easter bunny. You just don't see it! Two kids on a smaller ship admire the Black Pearl as their father, played by Will Smith, says it's not worth the staring. I'd be so happy if ours was that fancy. Because it looks better? Look, just because something is clearly animated doesn't make it better. I mean, okay, in this case it does, but I got paid a lot of money for this! I think it's time that I told you the story. Maybe if you sing. It's better when you sing. A lot of people disagree with that. Oh, we don't now! Okay, can you give me the memo of Smith things we like and Smith things we don't like? Where the caravan camels roam Where you wander among Every culture and tongue Really? I hear they cut off your ear if they don't like your face! Listening to that shit again, huh? Whoopsie! To another Arabian night yeah, Will Smith singing isn't that great, but I will give credit, this version of Arabian Nights is actually pretty solid. As the credits roll, it expands on the song, adding different melodies and mixing up the orchestration, while also showing us Agrabah and introducing us to our main characters. There's a road that may lead you to good or to greed through the power your wish in command. At first I thought, this was actually gonna do things right. Add and improve as opposed to take away and repeat. But then we get this in the same sequence. The diamond in the rough. Yeah, that's our intro to the Cave of Wonders and the villain. Two big parts of the story. In the original, they build up the villain, they build up the cave. Where'd that gold bug come from? Shit, look at that entrance! Only one may enter here, suddenly there's a mystery. The story is immediately in motion. So much character and information is cleverly introduced to you in a way you would never forget. Who disturbs my slumber? And eh, never mind, we don't have time. Rick, how is this movie longer? I'm Jafar! Move over, Raiders of the Lost Ark, most epic movie intro ever unlocked. We're introduced to the street rat Aladdin, played by Mina Masoud, who comes across Princess Jasmine disguised as a peasant, played by Naomi Scott. 
Both look and sound exactly like their animated counterparts, but where things get awkward is their chemistry. One of these performers is acting their friggin' heart out every moment on screen, while the other clearly thinks these are the rehearsal takes. Can you tell which one is which? Aladdin, isn't it? Uh, you're welcome. The queen was killed. The Sultan's been afraid. It seems everyone's been afraid since then. You can't escape what you were born into. You should tell the princess to get out more. Oh, do you have my bracelet? Yes, it's beautiful. Am I still on camera? Oh, I guess so. You'll be fine. I feel bad picking on this guy, because he clearly can move and dance, he looks good and sounds good, he's multi-talented. But for whatever reason, take two was an outlawed phrase when he was on set. While the princess is out, would you like to go for a stroll? Don't raise your voice at me! Gotta keep one jump ahead of the red line. Watching the One Jump Ahead song, now including Jasmine this time, there's two major problems I can't help but compare to the original. One is, it's not funny. So much slapstick and clever wordplay was utilized in the original, but here, there's not that many laughs. And that might be because of number two, the film has the disadvantage of not being animated. Yes, I said disadvantage. Both live action and animation have their pros and cons, and you can definitely see the pros of animation and the cons of live action here. In the original, there's constant movement, constant momentum, and even constant character. Not only can you fit in a lot more funny moments because you have more control, but you get across Aladdin's persona much more because he can have the perfect expression for literally every frame. Look at him, he's bursting with personality and energy in every moment. And on top of that, it's timed perfectly to the music. So much likability has gotten across here that we're taking for granted. Now look here, sometimes there's a cool stunt, but the rest of the time it's just kind of meandering. The awkwardly move with slow down and sped up footage, I guess, to simulate energy. Similar to a Bollywood movie, but we'll get to that in a bit. Regardless, it always feels unnatural and off. It doesn't even focus on the right things. Remember this crazy lady? Do I think he's rather tasty? Of course you do, she's terrifying, you can't forget her. In this one, she's not even in half the frame. Imagine if the other one just trailed off during her line. It wouldn't make any sense. Still, I think he's rather tasty. But that's the thing. The film assumes you've seen the original, so it doesn't have to try as hard to make an impact. The first one didn't have that luxury. Tell me what you remember more. These random kids he tosses dates to like it's barely even a moment? Or these big-eyed starving puppy dogs that just guaranteed you're going to give to five charities this week? Everything is magnified in animation, which means focusing on the right thing will make it all the more memorable. The remake is taking advantage of the original's focus so they don't have to try as hard. Look how much these words really impact Aladdin's core. You were born a street rat, you'll die a street rat, and only your fleas will mourn you. You see it all over his face. The emotion is just oozing out of him. Now watch it here. You will die worthless. I don't know your fleas will mourn you. Huh, oh, that sucks. But good to know my fleas care about me. BAD! The one thing more explored and arguably improved on is Jasmine's character, who was already fine in the original, but it's nice to see some add-ons. She's given more responsibility outside of just saying she hates being royalty. Her father is more competent and interesting, and they even do actual ruling stuff like talking about foreign policy. Kind of to a fault. Yeah, weirdly the concern of the original was the main characters and where they lived. Odd, right? In this one, there's a lot of focus on a place called Shirabat, where Jasmine's mother was from. It's a land we've never seen, know nothing about, yet for some reason it's the most important thing in this movie. Shirabat continues to amass. Shirabat is our ally. Marshal an army to invade Shirabat. Invade Shirabat? Invade Shirabat. 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 I haven't been this invested since talks of taxation in The Phantom Menace. What are we doing? And then there's Jafar, the aging, sinister, booming voice. He's been pretending the entire time. An imposter. Ensure your agonizing death. Daily show correspondent in a Halloween costume. <laughs> okay, this actor's gotten a lot of flack for how miscast he was. Even people that like the movie usually don't like him. So let's just say, does he look like him? <coughs> Sound like him? <coughs> Have any qualities better than him? It is a nice feather, I'll give you that. 
I'll also give the movie credit that they do try to give more time to Aladdin and Jasmine's romance, with him sneaking into the palace trying to talk to her more. But don't worry, someone funny will fix that up. Jasmine's servant Dahlia, played by Nassim Padrad, pretends to be the princess while Jasmine pretends to be her handmaiden. It is good to be me with all my palaces and wagons of gold things. Well, it's not too broke, girls, but few things are. Jafar sees Aladdin up to his street rat tricks of stealing effects from bad Prince of Persia games, and he captures him. He takes him to the Cave of Wonders, assuming he's the diamond in the rough. Yeah, the whole magic ring telling him stuff is cut out, so... Just made a lucky guess! As we're given his one good line in the entire movie. Steal an apple and you're a thief. Steal a kingdom and you're a statesman. That's literally the only question you have to answer in order to be a politician. Jafar says if he can get him the lamp, he can reunite him with Jasmine. So he takes him to the cave where he's told not to touch anything but the lamp. Here's a count of all the things they touch. Guess the Cave of Wonders was drunk when it was on gold security. Oh my head. Hey, you ain't touching anything, right? Uh, who cares? I'm gonna lose it all in the divorce. Like in the original, he comes across the magic carpet. Oh, hey. Don't mention it. Nah, I shouldn't bring you with. You may turn in a better performance than me. Actually, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but even the rug isn't as good an actor. Look how much emotion this thing has in the original. Somehow you know what it's feeling and what its personality is like. He's happy, but he's sensitive. He can get hurt, but he wants to help out. This one's happy when he's free from a rock, but aside from that, he just vanishes until the plot says, Need you for a sec. Nah, okay, fuck off. You couldn't even get a rug right. What are you doing to my rug? They peed on your fucking rug. As you'd expect, Aladdin finds the lamp, but Abu touches the 90th thing in the cave, which was just one too many. Could you give me a hand? First, the lamp. He gets to Jafar, who says he'll give him a hand if he gives the lamp. Now your hand! How about my foot? Boy, if only that creepy reed was in the original. What are you doing? How about my foot? Okay, that was more of an awkward creep. Aw, uh, creep. Like before, Abu steals the lamp before getting trapped in the cave, leading to... Excuse me, boy, where's your boss? Me getting booze! I'm sorry, I'm way too sober for this. SAVE ME, Jin! Hey everybody, we're officially on Twitch! Monday through Thursday, we'll be doing all sorts of gaming, and if it goes well, we might try some other different types of streaming. Come on by and say hi in the chat. Hopefully, we'll see you there. <sighs> you're the blue wish granter that actually makes me feel good. <laughs> I believe you're actually there! So, okay, let's talk about Will Smith as the genie. First of all, I get it. We're never gonna top Robin Williams or the brilliant team of animators that brought him to life. It's entirely pointless to try, so let's try! Bring anybody back from the dead! Step two, say, say what you want. want. Downward dog! Thank you for choosing Hobbits, Camels, and Caravans. Please don't forget to tip your genie on the way out. Again, this is a big disadvantage with live action. In animation, it's all the same realm. They're all drawn lines against painted backgrounds, so it all blends together. This looks like Casper's uncle got plastered and is trying to embarrass him in front of his girlfriend. I never once believed they were actually looking at each other. Well, Alibaba, he had them 40 thieves. You have a he had a thousand tears. It's awkward enough they're trying to do the same high energy visuals that just don't transfer in the slower world. That's your personal business, but we're gonna need to talk about that monkey later. God, it feels like he's bombing at an SNL audition. Woo! I'm the best. But Smith's head always looks like it's about to fall off his body. It's like someone made a bobblehead doll where the size of the body matches the head, yet the head still wiggles for some reason. I don't know, who cares? Now surprisingly, it's followed up by a really good rendition of Friend Like Me. Like Arabian Night, it mixes up the song a bit, but also has visuals that support it in a pretty grand way. Friend. It's like, damn, we're actually in a good Aladdin remake for a minute here. I'll also give credit that Smith actually isn't that bad when he's not covered in Navi's splooge. 
When he's allowed to chill and turn on his laid-back charm, he's actually all right. Who's the girl? She's a princess. Aren't they all? Treat your woman like a queen, I always say. We do get that half the time, but the other half? The other half. Oh, the genie! The genie is on fire! The genie's on fire, folks! I just want to make sure this isn't funny, right? I mean, people have science to prove that this isn't funny, correct? It's just awkward, weird, and doesn't match Will Smith's style. The irony of both versions is that they emphasize to be yourself, which is a lesson this performance really could have learned from. Put simply, he's a much better Will Smith than he is a Robin Williams. And that would be fine if the movie reinforced that. Take the Prince Ali song. The original focused on Williams' zany voices that translated beautifully into animation, turning it into an explosive number. Since this isn't Williams or animation though, it would make sense if they did something like the old Disney musicals. Make the focus be the amazing stuns, dances, and variety of movement. Well, they get that all set up and... Ah, let's just focus on two guys standing around while they can't sing. Show some respect, boy, can you flat down on one knee? This looks cool. Nah, needs more people barely moving. Don't worry, we'll balance it out with this nightmare fuel. Prince Ali, handsome is he, Ali Ababa. Oink pulled it off better. I think most people have pointed out a good chunk of the film becomes hit with Smith trying to give Aladdin dating advice. What they failed to bring up is the epic jam dialogue. We have jams. Jam? Jams! Yes, jams. Yam jams, fig jams. Yam jams. And, and date jams. I really hope you like humor about jams next to Shirabat, the most mentioned word in the entire movie. Exotic jams. For the jam. The jams. Jam jams. Move away from the jams. Interesting experiment. If you play this movie along with Ponyo, all you'll hear is jams. Ham. Jams. Ham. Jams. Ham. That night, they're invited to a get-together where Aladdin tries again to win her over. I made you look like a prince on the outside, but I didn't change anything on the inside. You're still the same boring, dull clod you always were. Jasmine invites him to dance, but it appears he doesn't know how. Because a thief who can climb walls and jump buildings clearly has no footwork. He's dancing right here! Isn't this the same day? Genie controls his movements, though, in a scene that, hey, actually focuses on the dancing. Aw, oh, can't we focus on Genie's hat some more? That's where the real wow is. You know I did have a few jokes about this scene, but his dancing is just so damn awesome, I, I'll give him a break. Later, we see Genie hitting on the handmaiden, and he's apparently awkward, too. Oh, it's funny, because it doesn't make sense to his personality at all. How did you get past the guards? I snuck past. All 48 of them? Even the ones that eat fire? Your guards are weird. Would you like to take an evening stroll? I've never done this before. How does it work? Do you like sheep cheese? Well, it's no jam line, but... He takes her on a date as Aladdin sneaks in to talk to Jasmine. Sometimes, you just have to take a risk. Try this at home, kids! <gasps> Is this... a magic carpet? They sing a whole new world with absolutely nothing new except an angry phone call to a voice coach. Now when did you last let your heart decide? Oh, Russell Crowe and Emma Watson are high-fiving each other right now as they're no longer the big musical punchlines. A whole new world. Oh, thank God for orchestras. My notes are as flat as the carpet I'm writing. empty, it feels like the music video for the original Aladdin. Like, isn't that cute? We kind of look like the real couple that had real chemistry from the real movie. iTunes link down below. Like in the last one, she discovers who he is, but makes up even more lies. He told me he was only pretending to be a thief to see the city, but he's actually a prince. I really was a prince. And you believed him? Tell me more, tell me more, did she make your heart swoon? Tell me more, tell me more, was his voice auto-tuned? Once again, the guards capture Aladdin as Jafar figures out who he is as well. Goodbye, Aladdin. No! No! <laughs> hey, at this point, it'd be the same runtime as the original. But Carpet and Abu rush to his aid and save him from drowning, or they toss him the lamp. 
carpets obviously melt in water. You know the drill, the genie comes out, uses a wish to save him, and Jafar tries to say he left. You heard him say this, Jafar, and you saw him leave? Yes. Just ask him yourself, ah! Your Majesty. Jafar is arrested, but Iago breaks him out as Aladdin realizes he can't use his last wish to set Genie free. People see what they want to see. Aladdin is gone. <laughs> no arguments here. It's weird, because Aladdin actually seems a lot douchier in this version, making us like him even less. In the first one, he's legit broken up about it. He can set his friend free. In this one, though, it's almost like he's boasting about it. It's not a lie. People can change. <laughs> That's a bad thing? Thought you'd be happy for me. I know you'll be a slave the rest of your life, but look on the bright side. I won't! And for what? You are breaking my heart here, kid. Man, that's some die-hard Padme heartbreaking acting right there. No Disney movies should have this many callbacks to the prequels! Take note! Genie, no, hey, come on! How come you don't want me, man? Jafar steals the lamp, though, and uses his first wish to become Sultan. You obey the Sultan. Hakim, marshal an army to invade Shirabat. Shirabat. Nobody cares about Shirabat! Invade Florida! It has all our grandparents! We'll care a little! Remove her! Jasmine is arrested as she sings a brand new song about not being speechless. I cannot start to crumble. It's a decent song, despite it not matching the feel of the others at all. But it does go a little weird. I will be silent. Oh my god, she was the genie all along. Now that's a twist this movie needs! No, this is actually a symbolic fight she's having right now. Ooh! Face the wrath of my furious anger as I wish you away in my head! Okay, I get the idea. She uses diplomacy and not force to convince the guards to do the right thing. Technically making this a completely wasted wish. What, does becoming Sultan just get you a new hat? But man, how cool would it be if she was grabbing a sword and fighting in slow motion while singing Let It Go 2.0? And then she does the diplomatic scene. She could be telling her friend, the head of the guards, thank you for teaching me sword fighting since I was a kid, so it explains how she can do all that cool stuff. And that would tug at his heartstrings even more. It would make so much sense. But nope, it's the literal thought that counts as she sings about how she refuses to be silent. Moments before she's completely silenced. I will do as you wish. So yeah, this scene could have been completely cut and we wouldn't miss a thing, but, you know, henchwomen. So, okay, Aladdin comes in and is revealed as a street rat just before saving the day. What? Wait, what? We're doing the ice thing again? Why? He's right there! In the original, everything goes to shit at once, and he discovers the errors of his ways at this point. Here, he learned it when he saw Jafar with the lamp, and we had Jasmine learning her lesson because she was the main character for a minute. So this just drags things out. What does it do? Allow Jafar to show off more of his you just basic acting? Your insignificant and irritation I no longer need to tolerate once I banish you to the ends of the earth. You're not even worth any effort from my performance. Sorry that was so loud. No, the most suitable punishment would be to make you watch while I take what you love most. <laughs> while I make kissy faces at you the whole time, do you like that? Blah, 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 blah. Like in the original, Aladdin uses the carpet to fly back to Agrabah and save everybody. And like before, he has to confront a giant, terrible hell beast. A parrot. Yep, they replaced the giant snake with a giant parrot. My god, are you trying to piss us off? If you saw these two movies on at the same time, why the hell would you pick this pathetic idiot sauce when you could watch something kick-ass like this? Seriously, who in the Christ requested that? You know what would be cooler than a giant snake? A giant parrot! So after the epic giant parrot chase, literally every episode of the cartoon had a better climax than that, they work their way back where Jafar captures them again. This movie really is good at going absolutely nowhere, isn't it? You can't find what you're looking for in that lamp, Jafar. I am the greatest sorcerer the world has ever seen. I turned a small parrot into a big parrot. Crazy! But you'll never have more power than the genie. I will not be silent. Eh, whatever. Girl power or some shit. As before, Aladdin tricks Jafar into wishing himself into a genie for even more power, and he gets trapped in his own lamp. 
Aladdin then uses his last wish to set Genie free so he can go after some Handmaid's Tale. I want children. Yes, two of them. Leanne and Omar, three years apart. You will entertain them with stories and songs. This is really specific. All involved should be afraid. The Sultan then hands over his crown to Jasmine. Which is weird, Will Smith is still telling the story even after he revealed he was the story. Kinda of feel like it should end there. She of course chooses to marry Aladdin and we get, in my opinion, one of the biggest insults of the movie, the credits. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm usually happy as hell when they arrive in a movie like this, but look at how they do it. Yeah, that's spectacular! It's like a full-on Bollywood musical, with no CG genies, no awkward editing, just really good dancing, and people actually looking like they're having a good time. Mixing both Hollywood and Bollywood style techniques. Why wasn't this the entire movie? How freaking amazing would this film have been if it actually told Aladdin like a crazy Bollywood musical? It would have been something new while still keeping true to the story of Aladdin. The possibilities are endless. But instead, it's the end credits. Like they're teasing us, like we know we could have done this, but eh, we're just gonna put it at the end, at the part where people usually walk out. So I guess I was wrong in that regard. This movie made me realize it wasn't dead on arrival. It was a friggin' missed opportunity! Trust me, for me, that's a big thing to say with a Disney remake! I'll say this, upon watching it again, I did see a few things that I did find impressive. Jasmine and her father had more depth, the songs were orchestrated nice, and once in a while there was an impressive visual when you were allowed to enjoy it. But seriously, half of it relies on you seeing the original in order to even follow it. It's got way too many dead silent moments, awkward acting, and lack of focus on what their priorities should be. I guess compared to some of the other remakes, it had a few things that stood out, which is more than I can say for many of the others. But I can't just give a positive shrug because it's less bad than the others. There's an incredibly unique and imaginative classic that fixes the majority of this film's problems before they even existed. And it did so by being new and innovative, as opposed to copying what's new and innovative. And even then only doing so because it was proven to have worked in the past. If you enjoy it, cool, you're entitled to your opinion. But for me, this is an Arabian night I'm not going to be checking out any time again soon. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. We have jams. Hey, Doug Walker here, the Children's Assessment Center is this week's charity shout out. This center provides a professional, compassionate, and coordinated approach to the treatment of abused children and their families, and serving as an advocate to all children in their community. They hear painful accounts of child abuse committed by family members, friends, and strangers, and treat nearly 5,000 children every year. This is a leading advocacy center in the nation, and they invite their entire community to join them in the fight against child abuse. So many children have suffered unfairly and deserve to have their lives put back on track. And through the simple act of donating, you can take a big step in making that happen in somebody's life. Click on the link below and see how you can help those who deserve so much love.